Hello everyone, welcome to It Builds Character number three, where we'll build, blah, 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 where I'm building Tuxedo Mask from Sailor Moon. So, this was a suggestion by Laura, aka at When in Rome, who you see on all of our uh, Monday night streams that we do, Horde of the Dragon Queen, she plays Odella, this was her suggestion, so shout out to her, um, so we're going to jump right into it. So, I mean, I'm not going to go too much into the uh, who Tuxedo Mask is, uh, because there, there's a lot to explain there, and I'm also not going to try to build Tuxedo Mask from a specific version of Sailor Moon, because each iteration, he's slightly different. I'm just going to zoom camera in here a little bit, maybe out a little bit. That way I'm not so far away from you guys. So, yeah, I mean, there's a live-action series, there's the manga, there's the original series, and there's also Sailor Moon Crystal, and there's probably a few other adaptations in between there that I'm unaware of. Uh, so we're just going to try to generally build a generic tuxedo mask here. So, all right, let's jump in. First of all, is a race. Human. We're going to go with a variant human, um, as we typically do here on the channel. His background is going to be Urchin, which fits his backstory, as he it did kind of grow up without parents. Uh, and I'm going to... It's tricky if you know anything about the series, because he kind of goes through multiple transformations and, you know, memory loss and things of that nature. We're going to say that he's lawful good. I feel like Tuxedo Mask in his Tuxedo Mask incarnation is lawful good. He's a bit snarky, but that doesn't dictate your alignment. Um, and we're going to say the player name is when in Rome slash Laura. This was her idea. Uh, all right, so let's start. Out. We're going to start off with standard array as we typically do. Uh, so it's a little bit tricky as he is quite dexterous. He. Uh, seems to be able to take a hit or two. Um, he does pretty good feats of strength. Uh, I would say he's probably... He seems fairly intelligent. I don't think he's super wise. But I do say... I would say that he is quite charismatic. Even if it doesn't always come off that way. So we're going to build him as a bard. Uh, and then let's put out his stats here. We're going to go 15... In the Charisma, we're going to do 12 Strength, 13 Con, uh, 14 Dex, and then the Wisdom and Intelligence is sort of a toss-up. Um, I don't know if he's... I want to give him the 10 intelligence, or 10 Wisdom and 8 Intelligence. That's the, ne the negative nature of doing point buys. You're always going to have something that's going to be as bad as it can be. Uh, and rather than try to bump all of these stats up, I'm just going to leave them where they're at. So, first of all, he's a variant human, so he's going to get a plus one to two stats. We're going to make Constitution go to 14 and Charisma go to 16. He also gets, I mean, he's going to have Common and another, another language. We're not really worried about languages because Sailor Moon takes place kind of in our world, so uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that. However, he is... Well, let's go to the player's handbook, too, just to get ourselves ready. Uh, and we'll jump down to the bard section. As a human, though, he's going to get an additional uh, skill proficiency for free as a variant human. We're going to go with acrobatics. And he's going to get sleight of hand and stealth from being an urchin. So, as we're building him as a bard... and. I realize that you may argue, and you you would be well within your rights to argue with me that Tuxedo Mask is more of a fighter than a bard, potentially even a rogue, depending on how you want to look at it, but I'm going to go with bard, and I'm going to tell you why. So, first of all, he is very big on performance, and, and by performance, I'm referring more to his crazy entrances, like... I mean, the roses, thrown roses as weapons, and they, phew, I appear from nowhere, I say my cryptic saying, I say my really cheesy saying, 
I say my bolstering your resolve saying, and then I disappear. Uh, so that, I can see there could be rogue as there is stealth and appearing where nobody knows what's going on. Uh, but a lot of the times when he does throw that rose and appear, it's to help either Sailor Moon or the Sailor Scouts. And he provides usually one, if not multiple, of them with a kind of encouraging phrase. And I'm going to interpret that as him giving them bardic inspiration. Uh, sometimes it's to break out of a spell, sometimes it's to not lose heart in things, so I'm going to say that that's his bardic inspiration. So let's jump back, what do we get else for being a bar? We have d8 hit die, we have proficiency in dexterity, and charisma saving throws. It's, hard, it's always hard to tell how high to build these guys, because of what I want to build him as, we're going to make him a 14th level bard. I realize that's a little bit higher than any of the things we've built so far on the channel, but I'm going to do that because Bard's final capstone feature only comes at 14, uh, as far as archetype goes, so I, I don't think that that's too difficult. So let's keep going. Um, Alright, we get three skills uh, and each of our choice. So we're going to give him athletics, because he does feats of athleticism. Uh, we're going to give him performance, as I already stated. And then this is kind of where it gets a little tricky. Because he does clearly lie well as he keeps the fact that he is Tuxedo Mask under wraps for most of the season. Uh, at least the first season. Again, talking original Sailor Moon, don't I can't speak to the manga because I haven't really read it a ton. And I only watched the first seven episodes of Sailor Moon Crystal. So, um, you could put Deception... Um, you could put medicine, as there is some healing that he does sometimes, which I'm going to cover in spells. Uh, you could put persuasion. Persuasion. He is fairly persuasive in a lot of uh, the things that he does and says. Uh, but he also seems to be, I wouldn't say insight, but I would say that he is perceptive in that he's... I mean, you clearly have to be perceptive to be able to throw a rose as a weapon from a great distance away. So I'm going to give him Perception. So as a 14th level character, we have a plus 5 proficiency bonus. Uh, we're going to not wait to put in any of these because uh, things may change, and also we have Jack of All Trades. So we'll get to that in a sec. He also gets proficiency in three uh, musical instruments. I'm not going to really bother putting down the musical instruments as Tuxedo Mask doesn't really use instruments that I can recall. And then as Urchin, he gets Disguise Kit and Thieves Tools. Um, I'd argue that Disguise Kit could be a thing, although I feel like because he eventually gets a transformation similar to the rest of the Sailor Scouts, it's probably more magic, but we're gonna give him uh, Thieves Tools and Disguise Kit. All right, so he's a bard. What does he get at level 1? Obviously he gets spellcasting, which is going to make this take a little bit longer than some of the other ones we've done, because they've been mostly fighters. And he gets bardic inspiration. So let's go ahead and hit here. We're going to put, uh, as a human, he's already got his stuff. Oh, he does get a feat. Let's go down here. Like we've been doing. Uh, ability score, improvements. He gets a feat at first level for being a uh, variant human. Um, we got, I was originally going to go with mobile, because he does move around a lot, but I think we're going to cover that in some magic. Uh, so, I think we're going to go with sharpshooter, because he is literally the most accurate person in the world with the ability to throw roses as damaging weapons, breaking things, counteracting magic from quite a distance, and it does a sizable amount of damage. He can throw it when people are being held up and it doesn't hit them. So that sounds like sharpshooter to me. He can make a rose do damage, so that is ignore half slash three uh, half or three quarter cover. Uh, no disadvantage at uh, long range. And minus five to hit plus ten to damage. So there we go. Um, okay. So that is his ability score that we gave him. Uh, let's just sharpshooter feet. 
All right. So he's got Bardic Inspiration. Bardic Inspiration. Uh, and he's got, that's a D. We'll, we'll come back to it because he's going to be level 14. Uh, bonus action. Uh, to grant to ally. Ally can use for attack roll, saving throw, or ability check. Um, excuses per, uh, short rest. It's because he's going to have them back on a short rest. So, let's see here. Uh, two cantrips. Actually, let's just skip to 15. So as far as magic, we've got four cantrips, 19 spells, as well as some magical secrets, and four, three, 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 two, one, one, one. Oh, eighth level spells. All right. So we've got four, three, 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 two, one, one, one. This is going to be Bard. It's going to be Charisma. And we'll come back. Oh, you know what? Let's do his cantrips. He's got four cantrips. Let's pull up the Bard list of cantrips here on my phone. Um, what do we got? So, uh, he seems like the kind of guy, like, prestidigitation is gonna be, uh, prestidigitation is what cantrip that he would definitely have. Um, I'm gonna say he's obviously gonna have vicious mockery, because he's kind of a smartass. So that's another, that's a nice damaging cantrip. Uh, I'm gonna give him Mage Hand, as he does do a lot of cool fancy tricks with his hat, moving his hat around, uh, as well as other things. And... It's tricky, you could do Friends. I don't really recall him mending much of anything. But I think uh, Minor Illusion just fits in general with the theme of the of Sailor Scouts. So we're gonna give a minor illusion. All right, so, uh, well, let's see. Bardic Inspiration at level 14 is uh, 1d10. It is usable per short rest, and we'll come back to that. So we've got uh, Bardic Inspiration. We've got Jack of all trades, so that's half proficiency to non proficient ability checks and all right, so we'll come back. So, uh, actually, and then we've got expertise in two skills. We're going to give him expertise in acrobatics, and then expertise in uh, probably performance to start. So, we've got uh, expertise, we're going to go acrobatics, and performance, and then... We've got his Bard College. So, I'm choosing from the Unearthed Arcana Revised Subclasses uh, article, I'm going to choose the College of Swords. Now, for most of the original season, I mean, at points he does fight with a sword, but he mostly fights with a cane. We're going to reskin that later to be a sword. But what does he get? Proficiency with medium armor and scimitars. So, again, he doesn't really wear armor, per se. He wears a tuxedo. Uh, but we're going to add that in. Uh, and if you're proficient with simple or martial melee weapons, you can use, the uh, use it as a spellcasting focus, which works well for us. You also will get access to either the dueling or two-weapon fighting style. Um, you could argue that, uh, hey, Jerry, how are you? I haven't seen you around in a while. I hope you're doing well. Um, I should zoom this out a little bit. Uh... So that we can kind of see what we're doing here. Oh, we'll get rid of this. There we go. 
Uh, so I'm gonna give him the dueling fighting style because I feel like that makes sense. So dueling fighting style. It's plus two damage. One-handed weapon. Uh, what else do we get at level three? Uh, we got our medium armor and scimitars. I'll throw that over here. Medium armor. You don't get shields though, which kind of makes sense because he's not a shieldy type guy. Uh, we are doing today uh, a Dwarven Barista. Hello, sir. Welcome back. Uh, we are today, um, Wednesdays here on the channel for about an hour to a half hour. I build character suggestions uh, from the uh, various viewers. So if I hit this, you should see the links there. Um, so basically what I do is I build, people give me suggestions of characters to build, and then I build them, or at least to the best of my ability. So today's suggestion was from one of our viewers, uh, and a good friend of mine was to build Tuxedo Mask from Sailor Moon. So I'm trying to build him in 5th edition D&D. So, moving down to uh, Blade Flourish, which is where, I, this is kind of where I went with this. Um, so as an action, you can make one melee weapon attack. Uh, when you do so, your walking speed increases by 10 feet until the end of your current turn. Whenever you use this action, you can also use one of the following options as part of it. Which is, again, he moves around quick, he's teleporting a lot, uh, and he's fairly swift and furious when it comes to combat. So we're going to go with here, we're going to type in, we've got the uh, Blade Flourish, uh, Melee Attack, plus 10 movement speed, and then... Uh, uh, flourish options. So what are our options right now? We have defensive flourish. Defensive flourish. And that is you spin your weapon in a hypnotic display. You can expend one of your bardic inspirations and add it to your AC till the start of your next turn. So uh, bardic inspiration to AC until start of next turn. That's defensive flourish. Then we have slashing flourish. Oops. Slashing flourish, which is if the attack hits the target, you can expend a bardic inspiration die uh, to cause the weapon to damage each target of your choice other than the, the main target within five feet of you. Uh, so that's not bad. That's a little extra damage as you're kind of... And he's, again, he's all over the place. Maybe that's throwing a whole bunch of roses. Who knows? So, um... Bardic... Uh, inspiration die in damage to all creatures within my feet of you. Except for initial target. And the last blade flourish we get is mobile flourish. If your uh, attack hits its target, you can expend a bardic inspiration die to push the target up to five feet away from you, plus a number of feet equal to the roll on your bardic inspiration die. You can then immediately use your reaction to move up to your speed to an unoccupied space within five feet of the target. So, mobile flourish, push target, five feet. Plus, uh, Bardic Inspiration, uh, feet away, move up to, move to within, is that a reaction? You can use your reaction, move within five feet with, two within five feet of target as a reaction. Okay. Ooh, sorry banging into stuff here so that is what we get there we're going to come back to the spells uh and then our ability score improvement at level uh four we're going to choose to make his charisma go up to an 18 nice and easy so ability score improvement charisma plus two so that gives us four bardic inspirations uh we also i should have put in there uh Right with Jack of all trades, we should have 
Song of Rest. And this is because we're going to be building at level 14. This is going to be a D10 for the Song of Rest. One D10 during short rest heals. Okay. So, moving on. Uh, fifth level, we our Bardic Inspiration dies go up. We get our Bardic Inspiration back on... Uh, on short rests, which we already have. Uh, then we're gonna have Counter Charm. I'm not even gonna bother writing in Counter Charm because no one ever uses it because it's not that great. Then we do have our level six uh, Bard ability here, which is attacking twice um, whenever you use the Blade Flourish action. You can attack twice whenever you use the Blade Flourish action on your turn. You can nevertheless still only use one Blade Flourish, flourish option when you take that action, but you can still attack increase your movement speed, do one of these three flourish abilities, and then still attack a second time. So that is uh, Cunning Flourish, and that is two attacks per turn. Then at seven, we get more spells. We're going to get another ability score improvement. Uh, we're going to take our dex up to 16. Uh, sorry if you hear my phone going off in the background here. So... Dexterity plus two. And then at nine, Song of Rest goes up. Okay, and then at ten, we're going to get a D10 Bardic Inspiration. We're going to get two more Expertise, and then we're going to get Magical Secrets, which we're going to add those in when we go down to do the spells. Um, so we're going to choose... We already chose Acrobatics and Performance. We're going to choose... For our additional Expertise, we're going to choose... Uh, athletics... And then I'm going to go with Stealth, because he's kind of a sneaky dude. So that was at level 10. 11 is more spells. 12 is another ability score improvement. We're going to put his Dexterity at 18. And that's going to be where we're basically going to stop for ability score improvements, so we can start filling these in here. This is 0. This is four. We'll start putting in our saving throws here. So we've got one, nine. These may get altered when we choose some magic weapon, magic items later, but we're gonna keep going. So we've got a nine here. Uh, our initiative is our dexterity, plus half of our proficiency bonus rounded down. So our initiative bonus is a six because we have jack of all trades. Uh, then our acrobatics is gonna be nine or i'm sorry we have an expertise in acrobatics so that's a 14. wisdom that's going to be a two because of jack of all trades uh this is going to be a let's see zero that's going to be a one we have expertise in this so that's 11. four and two is six this is going to be uh, another one this is two this is six this is one, two, one expertise. So this is 10. This is going to be 14, six, one. We don't have expertise in sleight of hand. We're just proficient. So that is nine. And oh, I'm sorry. I didn't give him expertise in perception. Just gave him perception. So that is a five. And then stealth is going to be a 14, and wisdom is going to be a 2. His passive perception is going to be a 15. So our thieves tools proficiency is going to be a 9, and our disguise kit also going to be a 9. All right, our speed is 30 feet, and we'll deal with armor class in just a sec. Um, and then. 13 is an increased Song of Rest, and then we have our, this is why I wanted to build him at level 14, is because of Master's Flourish, the ability he gets at level 14. So, uh, Master's Flourish, and the reason I chose that is because as we said at the beginning, most of his Bardic Inspiration uses are going to be used to boost the Sailor Scouts in some way. So this lets him, when he uses his Blade Flourish option, he can just roll a d6 as opposed to using one of his Bardic Inspiration. Uh, roll a d6 for Blade Flourish. 
instead of using expiration. So there we go. Um, we had uh, another dexterity plus two. So we've got that. Let's see what else we've got going on. Well, we're going to put a staff in here. We're going to put roses in there. Um, let's see. Uh, I guess we can do his HP now because we know. Um, what do we got? Uh, 14 in Constitution. He's a bard, so his base hit die is a 5. Plus 2 is 7. And then 7 times 13. 91. Plus 10. 101 HP. And he's got 14. 58. 14. And I haven't figured out the armor class because I haven't decided what kind of wonky armor because he doesn't wear armor. He just has a tuxedo. Um, Alright. So we did the cantrips already. We can figure out what his spell save DC is. It is 4, 9, it's 17 for the DC. 9 for the spell attack bonus. Now let's start going through his spells. So... Uh, we've got how many spells known at level 14? We have 18 spells known plus 4 magical secrets. So I'm going to pull up my spellbook app here on my phone. And we're going to start going through bard spells. Because there are a lot. So, thinking back to the various iterations of of Tuxedo Mask. I think Charm Person is a reasonable spell option for him to have. I also think uh, Cure Wounds because he was able to cure people with like psychokinesis stuff in at least, I know I'm not making that up, that was at least one episode. I'm also going to give him Detect Magic because he's able to sense where all the various crystals are. And I'm going to give him Disguise Self even though he has the Disguise Kit um, I mean, we'll use that as a flourish to be, uh, you know, the transformation. Um, let's see, Fairy Fire, Feather Fall. Just trying to scroll through here to see what other spells we have for first level. Long Strider is increased movement speed, and that's not really a thing that he does. Um, the only other thing, I, f I kind of don't feel like I want to give him Tasha's Hideous Laughter, because of how ridiculous the jokes that he makes are. And like, I just... And I feel like I remember one time that was a thing that happened in one of the episodes. I was watching like a super cut of some of his like goofiest things today. So I'm gonna give him Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Which is a fair amount of spells already. One, two, three, four. We've got five out of the 18 decided for us already. Let's move on to uh, second level spells. All right, what do we got here? Hmm. It's hard because all of his magic is based around, like magic is throwing roses at people. Um. Calm emotions. You attempt to suppress strong emotions in a group. Nah, not really. I'm gonna give him cloud of daggers. Um. But we're gonna go with that's actually cloud of roses because that's more of his style. Uh, enthrall, heat metal, hold person, invisibility, uh, shatter, silence, skyright, warding wind. Um, I, I think I am going to give him invisibility because that helps to go with his stealth. I'm going to give him locate object again for helping to find the various crystals. And let's jump ahead a little bit here. Uh, and suggestion. So that is what is that? Five, nine spells. We're moving on to our third level spells. We're gonna give him uh, dispel magic. Um. Hmm.
It's tricky figuring out spells for him to use. Um, I also feel like he has access to a lot more spells if you think about just how he's using, like, the fact that people are casting magic at and using magic abilities and beam abilities and things at people and he throws a rose and stops it. So, like, that's how I imagine when he casts counterspell, like, someone's casting a fireball and he just throws a rose at it and that's the counterspell. Um... All right, so dispel magic. Uh, I don't really see him getting fear or bestow curse. Um, hmm. I'm gonna give a major image as a uh, kind of an illusiony thing because he's got stuff going on like that, and I'm also gonna give him non detection because I feel like people like Queen Barrel and other people will be able to easily find him. Uh, if they could just scry on him. Alright. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Fourth level spells. Uh, okay, here we go. Dimension door for sure. Because he teleports around a lot. And freedom of movement because he seems to never be stopped when he's trying to run around places. Uh, freedom of movement. And... We're going to give him a locate creature. Again, to kind of go along with that. So that was 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We may have to pull back on some of these spells here. Um, hmm. I'm going to give him mislead as a 5th level spell. Because that's very... Teleporty moving around quite a bit. Uh, Weaken animate objects. Probably he doesn't have like dominate person. We may be able to give him greater restoration, possibly. Let's go with greater restoration. By that token, we should probably give him lesser restoration as well. Greater restoration. Um, mislead. Uh, so that was. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And we're supposed to only have 18 spells. We're going to have to cut back on some of these. Alright, we're going to pull out Locate Creature. Um, what else do we have that we can probably remove? Uh, Alright, so 6 level spell. We don't have a lot of options. Guards and Wards, Auto's Irresistible Dance. We're going to go with True Seeing. Because he does seem to be able to see through um, various illusions. For a 7th level spell... Um, hmm. We're going to go with Teleport. And his 8th level spell... Oh, clearly Glibness is his 8th level spell. That was easy. So how many spells is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19. So we got to get rid of at least one. Um, well, we just get rid of Greater Restoration. So then he's got Charm Person, Cure Wounds, Detect Magic, Disguise Self, Tasha's Hideous Laughter, Cloud of Daggers, but we're reflaving that as Roses, Invisibility, Locate Object, Suggestion, Dispel magic, major image, non-detection, dimension door, freedom of movement, mislead, true seeing, teleport, and glibness. Now he also has two, he has four magical secret spells, which don't count against that total. Uh, and one is, two of them are from fifth level or lower of any spell. So, let's go all spells. Uh, fifth level and lower. Now, there was, but there's a one move that I remember he did in... It was either in Sailor Moon Crystal or I think in the manga as well. And he shoots like a beam of energy out of his hands. I forget. It's like Tuxedo La Smoking something. Uh, can I find out? Is this it? Let's see. Uh, what's it called? Tux nope, that's not it. Uh... Tuxedo La Smoking Bomber, which is like a beam of energy blast out of his hand. So we could definitely find a spell that'll pull that off. We could do something like a Guiding Bolt. Uh, 
we could do like a chromatic orb or a color spray maybe. Um, hmm. We could do like a burning hands. That might not be a bad move. Uh, let's see here. What is a good idea for him? Also, we have our second set of magical secrets comes at what point? 14, so that's eight, that's seventh level and lower. All right, let's go. Let's jump up and take a look at our seventh level spells here. See what we've got. Divine word, etherealness, finger of death, firestorm, force cage, plane shift, prismatic spray. You could argue potentially prismatic spray. Uh, teleport symbol, whirlwind. Nah, so he's not going to have any seventh level. What do we got for sixth? Ah, oh, we're going to give him uh, sixth level. This is going to be blade barrier. This is going to be roses, and that's going to be uh, magical secret. Uh, what else do we have that we can give him that's ridiculous that he can have that fits him? Um, already did true seeing. All right, let's keep going. We'll go down to fifth level spells. Uh, Waken, Banishing Smite, Bigby's Hand, Circle of Power, Commune, Cone of Cold. Hmm. Yep, Conjure Volley, but this is again going to be Roses. Conjure Volley. Roses. Uh, and this is also going to be a Magical Secret. So that could be from, that's up to 5th level. What else do we have that we can get rid of that he's got? Uh, you know what, it's also 5th level. We're going to go Dispel Good and Evil. It's fitting for him. And let's go, and now we got to get ourselves our Beam Energy Blast that we want here. To shoot out from his hand. We could have done Sunbeam, but I, I, I feel like that's a little... I don't really feel like that fits too well. Uh, I mean, it could, but let's see if we can't get some sort of outward blasting attack. We could choose Cone of Cold and have that be his blast, but it seemed like it was more of a an energy or a heat weapon of some kind, especially with something like Smoking Bomber in the name. Do we have a fourth level spell that'll replicate that? I don't believe so. Um, we want it to be more of like an outward beam attack. Third level. I mean, you could do a scorching ray. Would also probably come relatively close to uh, splitting that. You know what? Let's make it lightning bolt. That sounds reasonable. We'll go lightning bolt, and we'll put in parentheses here whatever the hell the name of that thing was. Uh, Smoking Bomber uh, Magical Secret. Alright, so those are his magical secrets. So this is his spell list that I'm going with here. Um, and again, we have the roses, which are basically darts. And we got his ability scores. We have all of his stuff. We're going to do magic items in just a sec. But let's go here and let's fill, fill out the rest of his background here from being an urchin so I hide scraps of food I ask a lot of questions uh, unfortunately the background stuff doesn't really fit too well um, so going back to a wall everything own wrapped I'm gonna say I bluntly say what other people are hiding or hinting at because he is kind of forward with things that he says so we'll give him that Ideals. All people, good, rich, or poor, deserve respect. I think that's probably pretty true. Uh, oh, no, we have to take care of each other. No one else is going to do it. Give him that is his ideal. Bond. Um, I owe debt I can never repay. Escape my life by robbing. No one else should have to endure the hardships I've been through. That's reasonable. And then the flaw. Uh... Uh, 
will never truly, I mean, that's not necessarily true, but uh, we'll go with that as his other background option here. All right, we got his HP. So now comes the items. Well, clearly the roses. So we're going to give him like, I don't know, we'll call it a bag of infinite roses. We'll call it. And we'll say this bag produces, oh man, I can't spell tonight, produces an unlimited quantity of plus one magic, uh, plus one throwing roses darts. That way the roses are magic. They break magical uh, things that have resistance to non-magical weapons because he uses them to hurt everything. Makes him a little bit more accurate. He has an unlimited number of them. He has sharpshooters so he can throw these things out to 60 feet with no issues. So we've got that. I think that that's reasonable. Oh, I wanted to give him counterspell. That was going to be one of my magical secrets now that I think about it. Um, this is the magical secret. Actually, yeah, it's a magical secret. Uh, let me just real quick check to see that Dispel Good and Evil isn't a bard spell. Dispel Good and Evil. It's only Cleric or Paladin. And Blade Barrier isn't a bard spell, I don't believe. Uh, only Cleric. There's some really weird mixtures on these. Um, yeah, I was going to give him Counterspell because he does counter a lot of magic with roses. Um, hmm. Blade Barrier. I kind of like the Blade Barrier. I like the Cone of uh, Clouded Daggers. Dispel Good and Evil is a thing he does. We could probably remove Conjure Volley of Roses and make that Counterspell. Um... Yeah, you know what? I'll leave it. It's fine. Uh, so what other things does he have? He has his staff, or his cane, I guess you could call it, which uh, he uses effectively as a sword. Um, I want to call this a plus three cane. Uh, functions like uh, a rapier using dex and dealing 1d8. Uh, damage. Um, it also, as a bonus action, the wielder can uh, increase the range of uh, their attacks by 10 feet. Um, after that turn, the cane resets to normal size. So the cane is a plus three cane, so that is 12, 1d8 plus 7, and the roses are plus one roses, so they're going to be 10. And they're going to do uh, 1d4 plus 5 damage. Um, yeah, I mean, we see in several instances he uses the cane. To, he grows the length of the cane. So I'm going to say that if he has to use a bonus action, he'll have a range of 15 feet, which is powerful. But after he makes his attacks, it reduces in size. So he can't grow the range for a reaction. But he also can't use his bonus action spells. He can't give out Bardic Inspiration if he has to keep doing that every turn. So I think that that is relatively um, reasonable. Also, he's constantly referred to as like Cape Boy or Cape Guy. So I feel like we gotta make the Cape magical. Um, now what could the Cape be? I mean, we have a lot of existing magical capes and cloaks. We could make it a Cloak of the Montebank. We already gave him Dimension Door, though. Um... So I'm just going to say this is a uh, Cloak of Protection. Um, so because Cloak of Protection is plus two. You know what? 
we're homebrewing this whole thing. So we're going to call this a Cloak of Protection plus two. That's Attunement. Uh, and that's going to go up here. It's going to give him a plus two to all of his saving throws. So that's 11. That's four. That is... Is that uh, one? Two. And then 11. And we're going to give him... Uh, how about we give him this? How about a tuxedo of defense? <laughs> this tuxedo functions as bracers of defense. So he's not wearing armor, per se, but it does give him a plus two to his AC. So his AC right now is four, plus two from the bracer, or the tuxedo of defense, plus two from the cape of protection. So that's four and four, that's an 18. Um, I don't think that that's unreasonable. AC for character of this nature, uh, of this level, you know. Um, I don't know if the... You know what? I think that this also requires attunement, obviously. I don't think the Bag of Roses requires attunement, because, uh, or maybe this is a... How about this? Gloves of Infinite Roses. That's a little more fancier. These gloves produce an unlimited quantity of plus one. That way he can just, in his hand, and throw the rose. Uh, and the cane, the fact that it's a plus three cane, um, but it's a it's a quarter staff that uses dexterity, uh, and the fact that you can just grow the range of the staff every turn, I may say that that requires a two. And I was going to give him something funky with the hat, like maybe it's a hat of disguise, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, we could make it like a helm of something, like a helm of intellect, and then it's gives him a 19 intelligence. Uh, but I'm thinking we're just going to make that attunement too. Alright, so I think that's pretty much it, guys. We have a uh, tuxedo mask here. So we did his stats all from standard point by. Uh, he's a bard, and he's a bard. He's a college of the sword bard here. So to build this, you're going to need, obviously, your player's handbook, uh, character sheet, and then this Unarth Arcana article, uh, Revived, Revived Sud Classes, where they have the College of Swords. I chose this because he's kind of flourishy, and again, he's big on performances and things like that, so this is a way to get uh, you know some of that stuff out there. And uh, we have his background. He's an urchin, lawful good. We have the various expertise. He can show up and appear from nowhere uh, and, and surprise the Sailor Scouts using his Dimension Door or Teleport ability. Then he can give throw a rose with stunning accuracy and then provide them with some corny words of wisdom, granting them uh, bardic inspiration. Uh, and if it comes down to fighting, he's got his flourish abilities to uh, allow him to fend off enemies, potentially up to 15 feet away using his plus three cane. Uh, he's got his cloak, his cape uh, of protection, and his tuxedo of defense. He also has sharpshooter, so he can throw his roses with unerring accuracy. He's got cantrips that sort of fit his theme. He's charming. He can use this kind of psycho. The only thing I don't have is like a psychometry ability, because he does seem to be able to do, like, if you're familiar with the old show Dead Zone, where you, like, touch something and know what happened in the past. That was sort of a thing I remember him having at some point. Uh, so we have Disguise Self, Tech Magic, a couple of interesting spells, because I think it's funny that his super corny jokes would make people laugh, uh, and it would hurt them, or, or like, it, 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 you know, they'd be groaning at his awful jokes. Uh, we have a Cloud of Daggers and Making Roses, Turning Invisible, Locating Objects, specifically the, uh, the various crystals, the Rainbow Crystals. Um, suggestion, we've got the Lightning Bolt, this is one kind of powerful offensive move. Dispelling of Magic, um, we've got uh, Conjuring a Volley of Roses, Dispelling Good and Evil, uh, Turning Invisible and Moving Away, Being Able to See Through Illusions, Creating a Barrier of Roses, Teleporting, and then Making It So That Everybody Thinks He's Just The Best um, with His Glibness Spell. So, that I think is pretty much going to do it. 
four tuxedo mask here for it builds character number three edgar allen ho i see that you just popped into the chat so hello and hello to anybody that's still been hanging around in the chat just as a reminder this show here it builds character happens every wednesday uh here on the channel where i build a bunch of characters that everybody uh, viewers suggest i put a link there in the chat you can see the playlist on YouTube to see the previous episodes. The VODs are also available on Twitch. But there's an, uh, a link that you can check to see what my future episodes are going to be based on suggestions from various uh, fans and viewers and things of that nature. So we've done two episodes. One was my own idea because it was the first episode. Uh, and then the second one, it was... Uh, to build a polearm wielding bugbear which is a point i want to make that you don't necessarily have to suggest a, a pre-existing character you can suggest a character build um so i know in the future i've got a warforged pirate to build and the most dragony dragon character ever but i also have things like darth vader ichigo from bleach uh iron man you know, things of that. Uh, Samurai Jack are all characters that are coming in the future. But you can check out the link that'll be, you know, it's up in the chat and the link that will be in the description of this video, either on the website, on YouTube, or on Twitch, to kind of see what's coming when. Uh, and you guys can obviously suggest stuff there, and I'll add those to the bottom of the list. Shrek? <laughs> Alright. I'm going right now. We're going to go into it right now. Sorry for the million tabs I have open, but here we go. The 1st of November. You just watched me at it, right? Oh, you probably can't see it because it's... But there it is, right there. Shrek. Add it in. So there we go. <laughs> November 1st, 2017. Shrek will be what I'm making on this show here. So you can see coming forward, I, I pulled it up here. So we did Trevor Belmont. I, uh, I was on vacation, so I didn't do one that, that week. We did the Polearm Bugbear. You can also, there are links to the previous videos here if you want to just click to them directly. Tuxedo Mask was tonight. Next week is Hellboy, followed by the most dragony dragon. Darth Vader, Iron Man, Captain Jack Sparrow, Ichigo from Bleach, Sephiroth, a Warforged Pirate, Nobby Knobs from Discworld, Ezekiel Stone from an older show many of you may not know called Brimstone, Groot, Samurai Jack, and now Shrek. So, um, there you go. Shrek. Uh, the show starts at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, so that was about an hour prior to the current. Um... So yeah, if you guys have any other suggestions you want to put out there for character builds, you can leave them on the video. You can leave them, uh, you know, on any of our other social media. Tweet them at me, whatever. You can also always join our Discord channel, um, where a bunch of us hang out and chat after shows, and, and you know, a lot of the uh, the players on the various streams are there as well. So, uh, but you guys, that's it. These sh streams are relatively short. This one ran a little bit longer because I had to go through and design all of the spells. Uh, for a bard of 14th level, so. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Do you agree or disagree with my assessment of Tuxedo Mask as a bard focusing on melee, but still using some of his magical abilities, uh, and use handing out bardic inspirations and things of that nature? Let me know what you guys think. Anyway, guys, I'll see you next Wednesday for Hellboy. i also see you this coming Monday for Horde of the Dragon Queen, and Tuesday... For Storm King's Thunder, which is rolling into, uh, Storm King's Thunder is going to be rolling into Against the Giants, the Tales from the Yawning Portal dungeon, as we've gone so far off book. Uh, that's the best way to finish out the campaign, really. So, anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.